on 95.3 FM in Window Desert Radio. The Bold Walk. If you are watching on Facebook, you'll see that we have the Katutura Central Constituency Councillor that is Vidimba Rodman Kashaimo in studio with us this morning and we're going to get to know him a little bit. Vidimba, good morning. How are you? Uh, good morning. I'm fine. Uh, the morning is, is still early. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Did you get up this early uh, in the mornings, or no, does, does your day start a bit later? It's, today is it's very early. Today I woke up around uh, six o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Usually I woke up around uh, seven thirty. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so we, we we drew you out of bed a little bit early. We cut your dreams a bit too short. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, but then, but on that note, before we get into anything too serious, mm. um, I always like to ask our guests. You know, their origin story. Who is the man that we're talking to today? Who? Where is he? from how did he grow up tell us a bit about no, that okay i'll be oh uh, yes um i grew up at a village mm-hmm. called okao kongunya uh at a vitoto mm-hmm. so vitoto is a settlement it's just nearby okahanya mm-hmm. i think it's 45 kilometers away uh from okahanya mm-hmm. i was given to my grandmother at the age of two months uh and uh I was just a village boy mm. all along from the age of uh, zero to being me today. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with that said, I'm very curious. How did this village boy decide that, you know, he wants to get into the sphere of politics, um, especially granted that we know you also from a journalistic background. Mm. So how did politics come into all of this? Um I don't see myself as a politician. Mm. <laughs> I see myself as a community servant. Okay. Um, you know what? You know that I was a, a broadcaster mm-hmm. for the for 16 years or so. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I decided that uh, I want to serve my community, mm. and I think I will be serving them better if I opted uh, to buy for councilship position mm. therefore um i it just came out naturally mm. i thought maybe from besides being a broadcaster broadcaster i thought it was just a talent mm-hmm. now i'm doing my job mm. Mm. wow mm. um but i think let's uh, you know just take a few steps back and um you know talk uh, talk to us a bit about how you got into broadcasting you say it was a talent of course uh but you know what made uh, what, what propelled that 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 decision in your mind to jump to broadcasting was that what you wanted to do initially um as a youngster or were there other you know options there for you Yes, when I was young, you know, oh, I used to listen to Oshero Radio, mm. and Kavi Vedenbruka was uh, mm-hmm. a sport presenter during that time. Yeah. And uh, there, when other kids are playing, I used to take a stick, uh, and I put it uh, like a mic, mm. and I start broadcasting the match. <laughs> oh, wow. Therefore, oh, when Kavi resigned from Oshero Radio to go to the TV, mm. I thought it was a good chance for me to take that opportunity i came and approach um then nbc oshiro radio manager that i want him to grant me that opportunity mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just to do that work uh, voluntarily and i did that uh, for nine months uh, without a cent mm. and uh, after that when they started uh, paying me on a free lens b- basis i was earning maybe 700 and and 20 or so mm. and for two years i was earning 200 to 720. <laughs> after that um, um i started earning like maybe 100 uh, one 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 thousand two hundred mm. mm. after three years i was uh, employed as a contract employee at nbc and in my fifth year at nbc is when i was given a permanent position oh, wow. you know, yes you know you see it was just a uh, through passion yeah of course yeah. towards uh being a broadcaster mm-hmm. mm. 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 and do you miss it at all <laughs> uh yes a lot yeah, yeah. A, a lot <laughs> i think that thing is still in me mm-hmm. yeah yeah and also last weekend there was a horse racing event at okahanja mm-hmm. and the presenters there when they heard that i'm there they 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 called me and saying tony want to give us what is happening <laughs> and i i say yes yeah. but no hesitation <laughs> because i know that it's to me it's like uh, you know, if you're a musician, you mm. want to sing here and there. Yeah. It's, to me, it's the same. Mm. Here and there, I want to continue doing the live commentary 
and so forth. Even if they need me for World Cup this year, <laughs> <laughs> I will have myself. That's Why fantastic. Yeah. Yes. And then I'm very interested. Speak to us a, a little bit because, look, uh, being a constituency council and being a broadcaster are worlds apart, right? Um, so I want to know from w- what you've learned about yourself, um, you know, within these two professions is there anything different do you see that you apply things to or um you know is there anything else that uh, you know was added to your life a different element uh, now that you are counselor just talk to us a bit about that mm, i thought uh, i think it's god who prepare our path mm. wherever we are going in life mm. um in 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 2013 I got opportunity to go study abroad mm. in Jamaica, mm. uh, and I was studying sports management there. When I came back, also there were some issues there, and uh, we didn't complete that uh, uh, course. Uh, then I came back to Namibia. Mm. I registered at NAST mm. with the very same course of uh, sports management, and. Um, uh, I thought during that time, God was preparing me for this mm. because management is just management. You remove the word sports, it's still management. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, oh, when, mm, as I grow, partly as I grew up in Katutura, mm. yeah, when I started, when I came back from Jamaica, I, st- I, I started the uh, 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 sports academy. It mm. was a VRK football academy. And also we registered in Hopeful, um, Hope Soul Youth League yeah. of mm-hmm. Colin Benjamin. Mm. We, we, were, we were founding clubs of, of that, uh, the league. Uh, that league. Mm. Um, during that period is when I realized that I will be able to do better than this. Mm. Because, you know, uh, the, the kids from this side of the world, um, they buy their own things, uh, their parents buy for them. Uh, like um, soccer gears and so forth. Yeah. I did that for those kids mm. with my small salary from NPC. And when I, they are going to play out, maybe in a, at Okahanja or where else, I used to, tra- to transport them with, with, with my own fares and mm. so forth. W- there is when I realized that I, I, I would be able to do better than this in my community. Mm. Mm. And the, posi- the position which is there is just to become a counselor. Mm. Uh, therefore, I opted for that. When I opted for this, it's not because I wanted to become a politician. Mm. And also, I don't see myself as a politician at all. Mm. Mm. And with that said, you know, mm. um, working as a counsellor, um, it naturally comes with, you know, a lot of challenges, um, especially when trying to implement projects and funding and things are not there. Um, so just talk to us about, you know, your tenure as a counsellor. What have been some of the biggest challenges that you faced and uh, how have you approached those? I... Uh, to be frankly honest with you, mm. uh, we know that uh, we don't get, uh, there's no budget, big budget which which is allocated to uh, um, councillor's office. Mm. Uh, yeah, we get uh, 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 approximately maybe uh, 150,000 from the uh, uh, city of Windhoek Levis. Mm. That goes to the regional council. And uh, also we have, um, it's a very small budget that is coming from a central government uh, to the regional government. Mm. Uh, when I came into that office, I realized that, you know, uh, here I might just sit in this office uh, for the next five years mm. uh, without doing anything. Mm. Let me be a bit uh, proactive and see what I will put on the table. Mm. Um, Establish the Trust and Society Fund. Mm-hmm. It's a fund that I want to use to close the social gaps in in, in our community. Yeah. Yeah. Now um, some of the programs that I promised my people during the campaign it was a free community Wi-Fi. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And um, um, there was uh, uh, that 150 that I mentioned, which is allocated to our constituency, mm. and that money was intended for. Uh, income generating uh, projects maybe you have a small business and we uh, put some few dollars in your business uh, so yeah. that you can grow and so forth and we realized that for the last 10 years the benefit the beneficiary from this uh, program they didn't do much yeah. uh, therefore uh, you allo- you you give um, uh, maybe a uh, few equipments uh, uh, tailing machines and so forth uh, to these people maybe seven people uh, every year 
for the next five years, mm. which is about maybe 40, 40 something people. Mm. Uh, and uh, in the constituency of 27,000 population, I said that concept is, it is not working in my constituency. Therefore, let us um, use this money uh, for something which will cater for the larger group of our community. Mm. Uh, therefore, uh, we, 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 we are using our money that's supposed to be for income generating projects. Mm. Uh, we, we, uh, we, we are using it for free community Wi-Fi. Mm. We are busy with uh, called, uh, Wi-Fi extension at Katutura Library. <laughs> Uh, this year, mm. yeah, in the process, it's already approved at council level, okay. and uh, it's at uh, administration level. They are busy now. We are, we we, we purchase uh, five computers at uh, Katura Library, mm. and also we are going to have a free community Wi-Fi at Katura Library. Mm. Uh, it was that money is for this for the for the last uh, season. The money for this season. Also, we are going to have uh, to do the very same thing at. Uh, uh, Jacob Marengo, we are going to uh, give um, to have a very strong Wi-Fi at that place. Mm. Therefore, that is one of the things. The second thing, you know, uh, Katutura is the oldest township in Windu. Yeah. Mm. Uh, when our people were forcefully uh, moved from uh, old location, old location, you know, is Pioneer Park and yeah. Oakland mm. Park, yeah. uh, to Katutura. Um, and uh, when you look at those houses, uh, they still have uh, the very same paint of those years. Mm. And I came up with another project of painting our pensioners' houses. Mm. You know, I solicit uh, funds uh, to paint their house for free. I do that in Kajutura. Mm. And also the other thing that I initiated last year, it was a marathon. It was a 10-kilometer event. Mm. Um, but people to run around the boundaries of our constituency. One is to know the, bound, uh, uh, the boundaries of our constituency, uh, and also, secondly, is to listen a button on the health sector. Mm. You know when you are exercising, you don't visit hospitals so often. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And at that side, we have only one hospital, uh, one big clinic, which is the Katutura uh, Clinic. Mm. And now uh, every day is bombarded. Therefore, at least uh, if we we, 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 we we come with another approach of uh, uh, changing our people mentality, uh, encouraging them to exercise every day. Mm. At least we are going to listen. Uh, it's not the, the big percentage, but um, small margin on that health sector. Mm. Therefore, we host that event. And also, my, my, my predecessor used to host Katutra Expo. Mm. Yeah. And the, the very same year, uh, we are going also to revive Katutra Expo. Uh, since COVID-19, we didn't have uh, that event. Yeah. Uh, therefore, this year also, we want to revive Katutra Expo. We are going to have it uh, from the 31st of uh, uh, September, from, th from the 31st of August mm -hmm. to the 3rd of uh, September this year. Okay. These are some of the programs that I'm running in our constituency. Mm. And mm. speaking about the Kartura Expo, are there perhaps any new elements that we can expect uh, from this year's edition? Uh, yes, uh, we are going to have ICT Hum. Mm. Uh, we are busy now talking to uh, Innovation Department of uh, uh, NAST, mm -hmm. uh, and also we want to bring in Hawaii and paradise mm -hmm. uh, because or uh, you know or uh, when uh, my cell phone cracked mm. uh, where do we go mm -hmm. we, we we go to uh, foreigners who have those businesses mm -hmm. in yeah. namibia yeah. but we have a department of uh, uh, information and technology and uh, we we have university of technology in namibia yeah. but when your cell phone is broken where do you go i haven't seen any namibian who who's owning uh, the business that can repair cell phone mm. why are we not doing these things mm. on our own and also we want to introduce uh, those whole system to the youngsters to see on how does these things works mm. it's a new uh, things that we want to bring in at katutura expo this year mm -hmm. and um uh, also, we want to bring, you know, beauty pageant is, uh, uh, is a big thing now in yeah. Namibia. Mm -hmm. And also, we want to have uh, Miss Katutura okay. uh, during Katutura Expo for 2022. Mm -hmm. wow. uh, and also, uh, we'll have a 
uh, that agricultural department because some of us or many of us we are, are part-time farmers yeah. mm. uh, and also it will be a good platform to bring your animals to Winduk mm. uh, to showcase at, at uh, uh, Kalutura uh, Expo mm. and oh, we'll have these other you know, also we need to revive uh, those uh, SMEs uh, yeah. uh, uh, because we know that uh, they are in the reserves uh, after that uh, COVID pandemic. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Now, uh, I'm also quite interested just to get back to the projects that, um, you know, you've listed. Um, talk to us a bit about your assessment of how effective you think these projects were and are um, just in terms of, um, you know, moving the community forward. You know... I want to put it to you. Mm. Uh, being a councillor, it's like you're a father mm. uh, to that community. And uh, people came to you with a uh, lot of issues and many problems. Uh, I'll give you a uh, very typical example where um, there, was, um, there was a scenario. Uh, a young girl came to me. She's studying at uh, College of the Arts. And um, she told me that no... She's not going. She's not allowed to go write her exam because uh, uh, she didn't pay the fare for uh, this uh, term. Mm. And when she came to my office, uh, she needed at least two thousand five hundred or so. And uh, when I look at her situation, I told her that no, okay, I'm going to pay for that uh, school fee. Mm. Yeah, but okay, where I'm going to get the money from? You understand? Yeah. And that's why I decided to establish a fund. If we have the, uh, the luminaries of our society and the individuals, and even if I hosted the expo, mm. and the expo help, happened to make uh, a small margin of profit, the proceeds from that, we need to plow back into the community mm. through that fund to close those uh, those those social gaps. Mm. Somebody will come to your office uh, with a, um, some even students from UNAM mm. or NAST or NAMCOL. Uh, they want before you are given a NASA fund, at least you must pay the registration fee. Mm. They came to my office that they need a registration fee, and where I'm going to get that money from mm. if I'm not getting uh, getting any money from a central government? Therefore. I came up with uh, that initiative that at least let us uh, uh, have something where we can use to solicit uh, funds for so that we can plow this money back into the community through those programs. Mm. Mm. And uh, with that fund, you know, how is it looking? Are people actually, you know, contributing towards it? Are you seeing growth in that? More people coming forward to say we want to contribute to this fund so we can aid the community? Uh, yes, uh, but we are at the infant stage. You know, you need to do these things in a legal manner. Yeah. Mm. You need to register it uh, through under Section 21. Mm. And also you have to register that uh, at... Uh, um, at uh, uh, Biba and so forth. Yeah. We, we are in that process right now. But we started uh, with uh, doing this to the community already. Mm. To those who follow me on Facebook, I realized that uh, when somebody came to my office and I don't have money at that moment, I put his or her story on Facebook, mm. through my Facebook page. And when some good Samaritan are listening to uh, that person play, they will started to fork uh, their last send to help that person, mm. and it's working well, okay. especially to the Namibians who are in the diasporas, mm. those who are in America, England, and Canada. They help us a lot yeah. uh, through uh, that uh, initiative. Yeah. Mm. And uh, um, uh, we, uh, we, 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 I put it that uh, this thing need to be. We have to do it in a very uh, transparent manners. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, also, we'll have uh, independent directors who are going to to run uh, this fund. Mm. And we are in that process also. Okay. Mm. Mm. And then um, you, uh, another project that you've recently introduced is the um, Katutura Supporters Club, right? Yes. Um, talk to us a little bit about that project, what the purpose of it is. Um, is it for the entire Katutura or just for your constituency? Just give us the details. Uh, yeah, we, you know, last year it was a good uh, year. Uh, we, Namibian was, uh, we were blessed with uh, Mazilingi and Boma. Mm. And uh, every uh, Namibian become 
uh, sport a fanatic yeah. mm. through that um and uh, uh as i came from a sports background i realized that uh, we don't need to kill this vibe mm. uh we have to make it uh, a bigger thing now and also we shouldn't go b uh, backwards we have to go forward yeah therefore i established katutra central um the katutra supporters club mm. anyone can join but because it's just a name mm. Mm. but because i'm a leader of that community it would be good to start where i am yeah therefore we we, we established uh, katutra supporters club uh, this year in february we came up with a program that okay uh, if we create a supporters club it means is to support those athletes mm. or to support any uh, namibian teams when they are going to play out of namibia outside the country or also when you are playing uh, inland mm. uh, therefore we we come up with the initiative that okay this year there is a commonwealth games mm. which is coming next week let us put our dollars together uh, and go uh, for these uh, uh, commonwealth games mm. to support oh. Mazilingi and Boma when you are going to run at uh, our commonwealth uh, games in England mm. and uh, fortunately or unfortunately, unfortunately, the same way. <laughs> uh, Bo Bo Mazilingi will not be there, mm. but Boma is, is going to be there. Yeah. Uh, and also, we are going to support Team Namibia mm. uh, that is going to partake in Commonwealth Games. Mm. We started with this process uh, in, in February, mm. and uh, we are left with only a few days to go to the Commonwealth Games, which will, be, which will start next week. Yeah. And uh, we, there was a great overwhelming support uh, from um, the fellow sport fanatics in our constituency uh, to go to this event. Mm. Therefore, we are going with a very sizable number to support our team in England. That's fantastic. Wow. Mm. So so does that mean already, you know, as a build-up even to the Commonwealth, mm -hmm. um, the club will be uh, waking up tomorrow at 3 a.m. to watch uh, Beatrice Masilingi run the semi-finals tomorrow? Uh, yes, uh, yeah. uh, uh, for sure, for sure. Uh, you know, also she did well yeah. in her first race. That's yeah. right. Uh, against um, uh, uh, Elaine Thompson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Elaine Thompson Hera, and I know those people personally. Elaine mm -hmm. Thompson Hera, uh, Sharika Jackson, mm -hmm. uh, Shelly and Free Surprise. When we were in Jamaica, they used to train at the university where we were studying. Okay. Wow. Yeah, and um, I also support them. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, uh, and for sure, we, we, we are supporting them 100%. That's fantastic. We are fully behind them. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, Masilinge did well against, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, against uh, um, uh, Thompson Hera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think she will reach the final. Yeah, and uh, she will be in the top three, top four there. I think so. I'm very hopeful. Yeah, we oh, think so too. Crossed. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we hope yeah, so. yeah, I mean, after the performance <laughs> yesterday, I think um, it's it's definitely going to be a good one. Yeah. Uh, but then, just before we I leave think, you, I think also South Africa is doing justice to her. Many of yeah. us we wanted her to remain with <laughs> our local coach. Yeah. But now she look uh, very sharp. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Isn't yeah. It? Definitely, definitely, she does. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then, but just before we leave you. Um, I'm interested from your side, what you enjoy most, you know, about um, being a servant of the people, about being a constituency councillor, what brings you joy when you do your work? Oh, you know, I'm led by the spirit of empathy, mm. the spirit of humanity, mm. and the spirit of love. There's a connotation in politics where they said, uh, no, we don't need to... Uh, love one another. We need to work uh, together mm. for the common purpose or so. I want to, to change that version. I always tell them that, no, first we need to love one another mm. if we want to help one another. How are we going to carry each other burdens if we are not loving one another? Therefore, we need to love one another for us to be easy for us to help one another. Mm. And that's how I do it in my community. I, I want, I always, when person came to my office with a problem, I I'm, I put myself being led by that spirit of empathy. If it was me, mm. how I, how am I going to solve this issue? Mm. Yeah. When I solve a certain person, individual issue or a problem that he came up with to my to my office, mm. and we solve that issue, uh, that that thing give me a very great joy, mm. great sense of joy and happiness, and and it's it's the most thing that I'm enjoying currently. 
Absolutely. Mm. Well, Vedemba, thank you so much for making time for us this morning. Uh, talking to us about yourself, it's been lovely to get to yeah, know yeah. you. And then also just speaking so passionately about mm. the work that you do mm. um, as a counsellor. We really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Mm. One love. One, One love. love indeed. <laughs>